Hello and welcome. In the last months, we've been hearing more and more talking about cryptocurrencies, CDBCs, digital dollar, digital yuan, etc. Today I want to talk to you about an important topic, the digital euro, what is almost certain about it and how it will affect economic transactions. The European Central Bank website provides lots of information. They even put up a dedicated page called Digital Euro. The first thing you see is the introduction. They say, It would be a central bank digital currency, an electronic equivalent to cash, and it would complement banknotes and coins, giving people an additional choice about how to pay. If you go to the Frequently Asked Questions page, you can read some interesting statements, starting from the first question. Would a digital euro replace cash? No, a digital euro would be complementing cash, not replacing it. Question 6. A digital euro could also offer advanced functionalities such as automated payment features or using some form of digital identity. Automated payment probably means smart contracts. Question 9. The euro system is assessing design options that would prevent people holding large amounts of digital euro as a risk-free investment or shifting funds away from bank deposits to a digital euro. So, the total number of digital euro a person or wallet may hold is limited. Question 10 is very interesting because it talks about privacy. What data do you expect to process for payments made in digital euro? Will you be able to trace people's payment behaviour and share it with government agencies and other public institutions? They answer like this. For payments to remain a private matter, different types of data would need to be protected. The user's identity, data on the individual payment e.g. its amount and metadata related to the transaction e.g. IP address of the device used for the transaction. Then they continue. Users will likely have to identify themselves when first accessing digital euro services, but different degrees of privacy can still be maintained for their payments. They conclude the answer like this. A high level of privacy could also be supported in other ways. For example, users' identities could be kept separate from the payment data, allowing only financial intelligence units to obtain this information within a well-defined legal framework in order to identify the payer and pay when criminal activity is suspected. Let's think for a moment about cash. It is truly anonymous except for the serial number. There is no limit in holding cash. The only amount limits are when you pay. In normal circumstances, I don't have to identify myself when I use cash. In a cash transaction, the central bank doesn't know how much I spend, where and when. Another important document is this written feedback answer by several European organizations. In this document, we read things like Cash is so far the only means of payment for many vulnerable consumers. Page 8. On page 9. The legal tender of the digital euro should imply that the basic payment initiation technologies NFC, payment by proxy and QR code are accepted by all merchants. On page 10. As expressed in previous comments, from a privacy perspective it's unclear how enhanced privacy in any mouse transactions can be offered for a digital euro when it is linked to the commercial bank account. On page 57. Therefore, we would welcome a more thorough assessment and would prefer QR codes as one of the possible technologies to pay in digital euro. The European Central Bank is collaborating with five companies to build prototypes of user interface applications. Simulated transactions will be initiated using the front-end prototypes developed by the five companies and processed through the euro systems interface and back-end infrastructure. A technical document correlated to this is called Front-End Prototype Providers Technical Onboarding Package, dated December 7, 2022. This document outlines on a high level how the digital euro might be implemented with wallets, UTXOs, ledgers, different types of payments using QR codes, NFC, apps, etc. If you jump to section 3.1 you read, Custodial Wallet Management, the clients operating in the wallet service will manage user identities not directly known to the core settlement engine. The default model will be for each client to be in charge of the secure storage and management of the user's private keys, as this, or these, will be used to sign the transactions. This choice, as opposed to managing the user keys within the end-user devices, defines a so-called custodial wallet management model, where the intermediary operating the clients hold the user's keys in custody on behalf of their owners. This model has several advantages, among which the most important is simplifying the end-user devices and applications and providing more assurance. If you have an idea of how cryptocurrencies work, you should know the dangers of having a custodial wallet, no control of the private keys, which means no real control of the funds. So, let me know in the comments if you think that the digital euro is really the same as cash. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video.